fantastic. Hi, everyone. A little background about myself. I've been in quality assurance for 20 plus years. I started in 1994 with Merck out of the Rawway offices. I then moved out to California where I worked for Allergan and doing GCP auditing as well as GLP auditing for them. Eventually moved over to Pfizer. Actually, it was Agron at the beginning, and it was taken over by Warner Lambert, and then we went into Pfizer as a subdivision of Warner Lambert. Eventually, I moved from there on to Quintiles, where I was Associate Director of Good Clinical Practice GCP Auditing. And eventually, I went to Europe, where I've since been there since 2007 and have hosted uh, numerous EMA inspections and FDA inspections over the years. And so I do have a good background with regards to both aspects of the inspectorates. And so we will go ahead and get started. So the learning objectives are basically to understand the differences and the similarities between the EMA and the FDA inspection process. We're also going to include MHRA. Now, as you guys know, with Brexit, the UK is in the process of leaving the European Union, which is supposed to be starting to get implemented this March 2017. However, from all the news reports and everything that we're able to see in Europe, it will likely take almost two years or so for them to actually move out. Now, the reason that I bring up the MHRA is because the European Union has actually they were the leaders with regards to how inspections are to be done. They helped put the SOPs in place. They've actually trained other inspectors in the European Union. And so it's really relevant in terms of how the processes work. So I just want you guys to be a little bit more familiar with MHRA themselves because they are a separate entity from the European Union, but they're very, very much involved in the way that they train the Europeans to do inspections. The other thing that we'll be concentrating on a little bit is serious breaches, which is a specific UK MHRA requirement. And we'll also go through some inspection findings, although not many in this, in this session. Okay, so the first thing that I'll, I'm going to do is I'll introduce you to the different regulators. We'll talk about preparation and logistics. We'll go into what the sponsor inspection actually entails, and then we'll look at how the post-inspection works. And then as well, we'll also look into the collaborations that the Europeans and the Americans are doing and how that has happened in the past and what's going forward currently. So who are the regulators? Well, if you guys are in clinical research, you absolutely know that we have the FDA in the United States, which is the US Food and Drug Administration, then the MHRA, which is in the which is in England, which is part, uh, it's called Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency, MHRA. And then we have the European Medicines Agency across all of the European Union partners. At the moment, there's a total of 28 countries that are part of the European Union, and the EMA is the overarching uh, regulator that puts the processes and the regulations in place and then have to be implemented locally. So what is the inspection intent? What are these regulators out to do and to accomplish? They're basically looking that your systems, the sponsors, the sites, the CROs um, that are in place, they ensure that the studies are conducted under the applicable laws, the local regulations, and specifically with regard to the rights, safety, and welfare of patients, as we all know, which is also included in other other agencies and other processes across the board. So we're also looking to see, does the clinical trial data support the sponsor systems and applications, especially if it's pre-approval? And that's really the intent. We want to make sure that we have everything, all our, all our ducks lined up in a row before the inspectors ever get to the sponsors, before they get to the sites, et cetera. 